Hello, say chat up. Do you get triggered easily? Let's talk about this seriously. Think about the past seven days. Have you found yourself raising your voice, maybe yelling at someone close to you? Or maybe you spent too much time writing huge blocks of text as a response on social media or in some group chat, trying to prove how right you are and how wrong other people are. If that's you, well, we need to have a conversation right now. You are out of control and you need to admit it. The first thing you need to understand is that getting triggered is not just about anger. You're actually losing control. You get triggered during those moments when your emotions take over and then you feel like you've lost control. It could be over a simple comment that someone makes or some advice that you didn't ask for or something that you read online and makes you feel upset. And then suddenly you're caught in this emotional reaction and before you know it, you're reacting without thinking like a little monkey. Ah, that triggered you, right? See, I just proved my point with that. And once that happens, you're no longer in charge of your emotions because they are driving the situation and that often leads to regret, frustration, making things, the conflict even worse. So I'm not here to be giving you some feel-good theories that you have to stay positive all the time. Saying that cute cliche of thinking positive doesn't really work in real situations when emotions are running high. What I'm here going to talk about is practical, it's useful. It's about how you can stop getting triggered and start managing those moments when emotions take over. First of all, you need to have clarity about what you want. Let's start with something simple. Something simple but powerful. Understand what you need in the moment. Whether you're upset or emotional, what are you really looking for? Are you just looking for someone to listen? Or do you want advice? A lot of people don't think about it this way before they speak, and that causes a lot of problems. If you don't know what you want from a conversation, how can you expect the other person to know? So this is one of the main points people get frustrated, which then triggers emotional reactions. You might be looking for empathy, but instead the other person starts to give you advice. And that's when you feel misunderstood. It triggers frustration or even anger because uh, your expectations were not met and then suddenly you're there, you're reacting emotionally. So, before you even begin talking, just ask yourself, well, what do I really need here? Do you just need someone to listen and be there for you or are you open to advice and suggestions? By getting clear with yourself, First, you're setting the right expectations for that conversation and that will help you to avoid getting triggered because you've already thought about what you need and then you can communicate it clearly. For example, you can say, hey, look, look, I'm overwhelmed right now. Right now, I just need someone to listen to me. That's all I need. Now, that's going to make a huge difference in how your conversation goes and it also helps to stop those emotional flare-ups when, you know, something happens that's pretty confusing, it's not clear what you need. If you're not present in the moment, you have more chances of getting triggered. You also need to develop mindfulness and stay present. One thing you have to expect in life, unsolicited advice will come, criticism will come. People will say things that you didn't ask for, and some of that might make you feel upset, and this is where people often get triggered. Someone says something, and then you react immediately, without thinking, right? So, instead of reacting right away, you need to practice staying in the moment. That's mindfulness. Mindfulness is about being fully aware of what's happening right now in your mind, in your body. It's about not letting your emotions take over and cause you to react impulsively. For example, when someone gives you some advice that you didn't ask for, instead of immediately feeling irritated or upset, you can pause, take a deep breath, focus on staying calm, and this will help you to avoid jumping to conclusions or letting your emotions spiral out of control. 
You can practice uh, some simple mindfulness techniques like focusing on your breath, feeling the, the ground beneath your feet. All of that will help you to keep grounded in the present moment, will stop your emotions from taking over. Staying mindful will help you to manage your reaction. It will also allow the conversation to stay peaceful and productive, even when you don't really like what the other person is saying. The ability to stay present and mindful will help you avoid getting triggered in situations where your natural response would be pretty emotional. Here's a great story for you. It will help you to recognize uh, where uh, emotions come from. Your anger comes from within. There was a monk meditating peacefully in a small boat in the middle of a lake. And suddenly he felt another boat bump into his. And suddenly he became angry. Like, what, what, who's the idiot who's bumping into me? Right? But when he opened his eyes, he saw that the other boat was empty. How could he get angry at someone who does not even exist? So in this moment, he realized that his anger didn't come from the other person in the boat. It came from within him. There was nobody there to blame. Yet he got angry still. So that story shows that, you know, uh, anger that we feel does not come from the situation itself, but how we react to that situation internally, our stories. So when you get triggered by someone's unsolicited advice, someone's criticism, some stupid comment. Remember that story. The frustration, the anger that you feel often has more to do with what's happening inside of you rather than uh, what the other person did or said. Recognizing your emotions coming from within, it will really help you to regain control and stop you getting triggered by situations that would normally upset you. See that once you realize that your reaction is your own, it will become easier to manage and also prevent some uh, emotional outburst. You need to improve your self-awareness. The key to not getting triggered is recognizing that your emotional response is something that you can control. When someone gives advice or some criticism that feels like an attack, the first thing to do is to pause. Take a mindful moment. Notice how you're feeling. Are you starting to get defensive? To feel your anger rising? Once you acknowledge these emotions, then you can make a conscious decision about how to respond. This self-awareness will give you the power to choose how you will react. Instead of letting your emotions to take over, you can stay in control. You might decide to calmly explain what you need, or you might choose to just listen and then respond later when you're feeling more centered. Now, the point here is you don't have to let your emotions dictate, determine your actions. By becoming more aware of your emotional triggers, you can prevent them from scaling into reactions that later you will probably regret. You can use empathy and think of annoyances as a gift. This is a more advanced technique. Yeah, that's right. There's another advanced idea is to reframe advice as a gift. I know it sounds hard, especially when it comes like some advice that you didn't ask for, but this is a key strategy to avoid getting triggered. Here's what most people, you know, happen. They will say things that they, because they care, they're not really, really trying to upset you. So you can see that advice or that criticism, not as judgment, but as a way that they are trying to help. Even if the advice is not really useful to you at the moment, it's probably coming from a place of good intentions. So if you can reframe that advice in this way, it will help you to feel less frustrated and reduce the emotional trigger. It's not about whether the advice is right or wrong. That, that's not the point. It's about shifting your mindset, your interpretation, so you can handle that situation without getting upset or emotionally overwhelmed. You can even say something like, hmm, Thank you for sharing that with me. I know you're probably trying to help me. I know you're trying to help. But right now, I just need somebody to listen, that's all. So your response will show that you appreciated the intention, but it also sets a boundary. It helps to prevent the conversation from turning into an argument because you are like, you're acknowledging that there is an effort, there is a good intention. You're staying in control, you're explaining what you need, 
this a simple reframe that allow you to avoid getting triggered because of that advice that you didn't ask for, and it will also keep the conversation from becoming uh, emotionally charged. One of the most powerful tools to prevent emotional triggers is using empathy to understand the other person. So when somebody's advice or feedback will trigger you, you take a moment, put yourself in their shoes, try to understand where they are coming from. And then you'll see that most of the time people are actually trying to help, even if their approach is not the best. Uh, by practicing this empathy, you can shift the way that you feel about the situation. Instead of feeling judged, feeling attacked, you can see that advice as coming from a place of care. That, that doesn't mean you have to agree with them. But understanding their perspective can help you to stay calm and avoid some emotional reaction. Some people think that well, when you show empathy, uh, to someone giving you that unsolicited advice means that you are agreeing with them. That's not the case. The belief that being empathetic means you have to accept that they are right. You know, their advice is good, even if you don't want to. No, that's not what empathy means. Empathy here is about understanding where the other person is coming from. It's not about agreeing with them. You can be empathetic, and still decide that that particular advice uh, is not for you. It's okay. By understanding the intention of the other person, you're less likely to feel judged or attacked, right? This will help you to keep your emotions in check. You don't have to be accepting the advice just because you're showing empathy. They're two separate things. Empathy is just a way to avoid getting triggered. It's not a way for you to become uh, passive and uh, agree with everything that the other person is saying. Just be more calm in a thoughtful way, even if you don't agree with what is being said. That's fine. The reason I'm making this clarification, I know many people misunderstand a lot of you know, the messages that we share here. I read your comments. I see that many times the ideas that I'm sharing are misinterpreted. So let me make it super clear. Mindfulness does not mean being weak or being somebody who accepts abuse. It's also not about refusing to see your problems. Do you think that mindfulness like that, like a way to avoid dealing with the real issues? Some people think like that when they speak about mindfulness and reframing that advice as a gift. I'm not asking you to ignore the problem. You might argue that, you know, this will put pressure on you to control how you feel without dealing with the real issue at hand, like setting boundaries or addressing the bad behavior. No, that's not what mindfulness is about. Mindfulness is about recognizing what is happening inside of you so then you can respond with clarity, with control. It's not about pretending that everything is okay. It's about managing your emotional reaction first so you don't react impulsively or let the anger take over. And once you've calmed down, then you can think, clearly about how to manage, how to handle that situation. Maybe that means setting firm boundaries or directly saying that advice is not very helpful. When you're calm, when you collect it, then you're in a much better position to address the real issue without letting your emotions uh, cloud the conversation. So mindfulness is not about avoiding the problem. It's about giving you the control to handle that situation in the right way. Another thing that uh, comes up is the, the issue of uh, power dynamics. Some people say that mindfulness or uh, reframing advice that doesn't really work, or this advice is coming from somebody in a position of authority, like a, your boss or a parent, is complicated. They argue that mindfulness is not going to help to change that because there is an imbalance of power in that relationship. And the real power is that you might feel controlled, that you don't have an option, that you're being manipulated. So, Here's where mindfulness helps. It does not fix the power dynamic, but it does help you to stay emotionally grounded in those situations. When you're calm, when you're not reacting emotionally, then you can better assess, well, what's the deal? What's going on? Is that advice useful? It's not just about uh, the people controlling the situation. Once you have that clear, then you can decide how to respond. You might need to set boundaries or push back in a calm and assertive way. The key here 
is to handle things without allowing your emotions to take over. Mindfulness is about keeping control of yourself. Especially when the power dynamics are tricky, you need to make smarter decisions about how to deal with the situation. Now, some also, other people also might say, you know, they might misunderstand mindfulness completely. They might think it's about, oh, mindfulness, yeah, yeah, I know. It's just a sitting and doing nothing uh, when uh, things are bad. Mindfulness is not about letting things aside. You might think that mindfulness is about being passive or weak uh, when things are bad. That's a complete misunderstanding. Mindfulness is not about doing nothing. It's about pausing. Just taking a moment to become aware of how you're feeling, then choosing how to respond. So it's the opposite of passivity. Instead of reacting impulsively, mindfulness will give you the space so you can think, and then you can act deliberately. So when somebody comes and says something you know, inadequate, gives you some bad advice, mindfulness will help you to evaluate it calmly. It's not about ignoring the advice. It's just not letting you get into an emotional reaction. You can decide to either politely reject that advice or address it in a more assertive way in, under your own terms because you're not allowing your emotions to take over. The metaphor of that boat, the, the boats or the monk on the boats, it helps you to understand that you're getting triggered because of your own brain, not because of what other people do or say. I know there is another common criticism when I tell that uh, story or the, the, the metaphor of the boat, some people <laughs> misunderstand this story completely. They might miss the message about how our emotions come from within us, not from the objective situation itself. The story is not about boats. It's a metaphor, of course. The monk got angry because he assumed there was somebody else causing a problem because they're not being smart. And when he realized that the other boat was completely empty, then he realized that the anger was coming from inside him. The situation didn't cause anger. His reaction was causing the anger. Here's the key lesson. Oftentimes when we get triggers, not because of what somebody said or did, it's because of our own assumptions, our interpretations, our expectations. So the story helps us to understand that our emotions often come from within, not from the particular specific external situation. So when you realize that, you stop blaming the situation. You start to focus on managing your own response instead. It makes it so much easier for you to stay calm and make better decisions. So what you can do now, you can go to arata.se forward slash how to say no, over there you're going to find useful exercises to change how you think and finally stop getting triggered. How to say no is a training that will really help you to, have, to set healthy boundaries without losing your cool.